Maybe it's dangerous to assume that this new person is the one who knocked out our crew, right? We have a strange new power that doesn't seem to be related to Clown College guy. You know, maybe the just his one of his gases. Maybe he has more than one gas. One of his gases just you know knocked him out. That's possible. But then immediately after that scene, you have a guy show up and they're being very coy about his face, and he recognizes Law, and, and he does the same thing to Law. Actually, no, there has to be a connection because the same thing happens to Law, right? There has to be a connection. Okay, I was gonna say maybe the show isn't being as straightforward as we think. Maybe, you know, somebody just shows up at the same time somebody uses a new power and the two things are not connected. Not true. Law also got knocked out and he was in a completely different place. He was inside. Okay, so I just figured this out over time. Like, when you say shit out loud, this is why I've always said this. You're puzzling a part problem. You can't figure something out. You speak your problem out loud to somebody else thinking maybe they can come up with an idea that can help you. And as you say it to them, the solution occurs to you. It's because the voice we use in our heads doesn't activate the same part of our brain as when we say something out loud. When we say something out loud and hear it with our ears, that's a different part of the brain working. Look, I'm not a brainologist. I don't know. But I, like this is true to me, right? There's no scientific basis for this. But I believe that what we hear activates a different process in our brain than when we just think something. That's why people talk out loud when they're by themselves. Because talking out loud, you can come up with solutions or you can think of things that you didn't occur to you. I've been thinking about this for 20 minutes. As I was setting everything up, I was like, hmm, maybe it's not the same person. I guess I'll put this in my intro. And then as soon as I say it out loud, it occurs to me, wait a minute. He was in a different part. You see, we saw this happen live, right? So um, just more proof. Speaking out loud activates a different part of your brain. Yeah. Myth busted. <laughs> All right, well, at any rate, let's go ahead and get into it. This is episode 598. You know where we are, and you know where we're going. Three, two, one. Huh. It's like, hmm. <laughs> She seemed to be in on it, by the way. Bird girl. She seems to know who this is. Just showed up. You think it's Vegapunk? I don't know that she'd be friendly with Vegapunk. That didn't occur to me. He's somebody who can mess with you, man. Because pretty much Law's been running this island. He's powerful as hell. <laughs> Look at her. She's in on it, man. I don't know if she'd be friendly with Vegapunk. I don't know if Law would know Vegapunk. <laughs> Who the hell are you? I wonder if I heard Law's name. It was hard to tell. He hasn't been choked on consciousness yet. Eh, I've never seen him before in my life. What is that, a steak on your face? Yeah, I see. Look at her flapping her wings. Calm down back there. Yeah, yeah, evil as hell. Yeah, I think I'm done all right. Just to put a fine point on it, she flew over to his side. <laughs> Virgo, whoever the hell that is. What is on your face, dude? We don't need the details. Look at him. he's got is that blood on the floor? Yeah, it came out of his mouth. 
<laughs> Jesus. This dude means business. <laughs> Damn, grown-ups. You really are dismissive as hell, man. What an asshole. <laughs> you can't, you can't, you don't have to smoke, man. Oh, shit. Wait a minute. I, for a second, I thought that was his heart. That's not his heart. That's a uh, smoker's heart, right? Because uh, once upon a time does that, where you squeeze hard and you you mess up somebody. <laughs> Look at her flapping her wings. By the way, that's another example. Um, wait, does she have arms? I think the edge of her wings are, are have fingers. Another example: you only have four limbs, right? She has two legs and two wings, and that's it. Evolutionary speaking, that's all you can have, right? I think her fingers come from her wings, but they better because if she has arms and wings, that's not right. But I think they got it right. Yeah. Yep. Somebody picked up the heart. Tell you what, man, there's some powerful people on this damn island. He's going to take credit, but he didn't do that shit. I don't think. You really are a master sniffer. Yeah, because he don't care about you, man. Yeah. Yeah, shit. I guess somebody's in there about to rock your world, though. Yeah, look at him pretending he don't know. Your lies are going to be exposed. This is a fragile house of cards you're building here, man. The Cool Brothers. They did blow it, didn't they? It, it would be for most people, actually. <laughs> what an asshole. When are you going to run out of shit to throw out there, man? I love angry brick face. Angry brick faces. Somehow his skeleton turns his eyes into angry eyes. Even though it's a skeleton that shouldn't be able to move, right? His his skull, right? His skull shouldn't be able to move. But it does. His skull is actually very flexible. And when he gets angry, it's awesome. This poor bastard here, man. <laughs> Guess we're still waiting for Sanji to come back, right? I'm out of here. No chance in hell. Will not be careful. He's feeling his feelings, man. Somebody risking their life for you. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. <laughs> you just gonna lay there and die, you dumbass? No wonder you died the first time. That was panicky eyes. Get this slime out of my face. <laughs> That's right. Dice it up. Doesn't really help much, but you know, it'll slow it down. I mean, it's not going to do much, right? Got to get, get that gas. Ah, shit. Yeah, you don't have lungs, idiot. Do the joke. Do the joke. We know you're going to do the joke. 
Now, can we go? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> He's such a moron. <laughs> you can basically step on Superman's cave for a second. And learn from observation. That's a really good point. Well, it's either in the water. I guess they can't run. I was wondering why they weren't running. It's because they're surrounded. What's it going to be? Tsunami? Uh, is that what we're calling the, the Sanji and Nami's body? Tsunami? Gee, the frozen water is cold. Imagine that. <laughs> Guess that's one way to get across a lake, huh? Jellies. <laughs> yeah, respect your elders. Don't aren't they supposed to respect their elders? Why in, in anime are they always called them geezers? Shouldn't you respect your elders? I thought that was a whole part of the culture. See the dead fish from the poison. It's kind of sad, man. I hate that. Better swim faster, dude. Shit. Of course, the one living shark left. Or it's not down here. Wouldn't that be some shit? You just think it's down here. Oh, shit. Jesus Christ. Really? Well, it just happened, at least. He would have been uh, thrashing around a lot, lot, lot sooner than this, otherwise. Jesus. You shithead. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, man. You're going to need to mess this shark up. Yeah. Why would he be bluffing? Doesn't feel like the time, does it? Come on, man. Pull it together. Jesus, I can't believe you let go of the damn shark. Incompetent. Well, it does allow you to do a move. Yeah, let go of the damn body. Jesus. Now, you just got to get back up. I thought he was going to kind of ride the shark up to the surface and then get it, right? Can we, like, you know, go? Oh, shit. Just keeps getting worse, doesn't it? Oh, Jesus effing Christ. Guess the shark is mad, huh? Yeah, get succumb to the poison gas, you asshole. That's what you get. But, you know, you gotta ingest the poison, right? The shark ingests it because it breathes water. <laughs> that, that face is hilarious, man. Well, I mean, he's not being bit anymore. Why is he still being so dramatic? <laughs> I mean, what happens if it closes up? You can get, still get out, right? It's not like it's a thick crust. Yeah, but now what? You can't fly, so how are you getting over to the, to the, the beach? <laughs> Who's this, Sanji? Uh, yeah. I think my favorite might be Robin. It's a book, you know, I'm a reader, so. You don't have your body yet, do you? 
Oh, shit, he does. So I guess uh, Sanji made it to the beach. Okay. All right, you got your shit back together. He is pretty tall, ain't he? Did they say that Brooke was eight feet tall? Yeah. He has two swords. <laughs> right. Funny eyebrow, man. <laughs> He's holding a grudge, man. We know you're a dick. Barbarians, pirates. <laughs> He said, once you get your body back, we're going to fight. Remember that? Yeah. Somebody said that. It was either him or Zoro. Pretty sure it's him. All the shit he's been talking. <laughs> That's right. You better cry. You were a dick. <laughs> <laughs> You've done him a great service, man. <laughs> you shouldn't have called me a pirate and a barbarian, even though I am. <laughs> I like this. For God's sake, forgive the man. This is pathetic. <laughs> He would have never gotten back together, man. Can, we're going to die here? Do you mind? Yeah. Remember this? Reminds me of Futurama. They had that Star Trek episode. And they were wasting time holding court. And then towards the end, one of the characters, uh, I think it was Lila, she's like, by the way, we're still being chased by the aliens. They're still trying to kill us. So should we go do something about that? And they all leave and go back to the bridge. Whole episode, this has been happening, but, you know, they weren't doing anything about it. <laughs> yep. We mentioned it before, but the way he walks is just supposed to be cute. You know, the sound he makes. It sounds like a um, one of those... Um, you know those darts that shoot out of the gun and stick to like the, the fridge and the wall and stuff? The sound it makes when you pull it off is kind of what his feet sound like. No hoof would ever sound that way is what I'm saying. This is a secret book of forbidden knowledge. He had to go get a chair. You know you can change your size, right, dude? Hey, man. I know people would really like to read that book. Oh, we got an airship. That's how we're getting out of here. But no, we still have our... Uh, Thousand sunny ship. I really like the aesthetic of the story arc. You know, the, the minions, the way they look, these um, Pac Man villains, the way they look, the clown college guy, the way he looks. Like, the, the aesthetic of everything is really the, 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 the character designs and the set designs and location designs is all really cool the land of ice and fire it all works for me yeah <laughs> 
He loves that body. I was wondering about that. Would fire work, right? He can do the thing like on Game of Thrones where his sword catches on fire. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Let's do this. I knew there was a reason we revived your ass. Good shit. But what do you think Zoro does? Like, come on now. That's right. The night is dark and full of terrors. Yeah. Ha! Ah, I like it. So his sword doesn't catch on fire. You do. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Maybe a bit much. Holy shit. Clear the area, man. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. You can learn a lot from a dummy. Yeah. <laughs> Why, yes, Brooke, you are still alive. I'm glad you noticed. Hey, and he says this like it's nothing, right? Foxfire. I like that. That's a very specific skill set, but we'll take it. Um, we're going with you, dude. Might as well go to the laboratory. The action's there anyway, right? <laughs> Respects, man. He's like, respect. <laughs> you know, if you just literally just describe the plot of this story arc, you sound batshit crazy. You know how, um, and I hate when reaction channels do this, they start an episode. They're getting ready to do, like, uh, episode five of season three of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., okay? So they describe the plot so far that season and the plot of the last episode they just watched. And they, they'll spend three or four minutes doing this, describing the plot. Look, man, if we're watching reactions, we've seen the series you're reacting to not just once, not just twice, but thrice. At least three times, probably more. I watch uh, Lost Reactions. I've seen that series a dozen times. I watch Buffy Reactions. I've seen that series 20 times. I watch, uh, like I said, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Vampire Diaries. I've seen Vampire Diaries so many times. Those are the big ones. There, there's some other, like Rick and Morty every now and then in the early seasons. So, like, we've seen the show, man. Like, you know, what are you doing? Are you proving you remember it? Like, it doesn't make any sense, right? But... Let's say you did that for this story arc, just from when they first got on this island. Say you say your reaction channel and you're describing what's happened so far. Just literally just describe it. You're not embellishing anything. You're just saying literally what happened. You're just stating what happened. They would lock you in a rubber room, man. Like, this is crazy. This is batshit crazy, this plot line of this story arc. It's crazier than Zombie Island, and Zombie Island was nuts. Like, there is so much happening, man. It's all nuts. And so... It just gets more and more wild, which at this point, he, he uh, the author at this, at this point of him writing the manga had reached a point of Stephen King about 20 years into his career, J.K. Rowling with the books five through seven. Uh, who else? That, those are probably the big ones. The ones who were so powerful, they had reached such a level of success, they couldn't be edited. They could not be edited. Like, people can't tell Stephen King to do jack shit. They couldn't tell J.K. Rowling for the last few uh, Harry Potter novels. She could do whatever the hell she wanted, right? Same with him. Like, he can't be edited. Like, there could have been times in the first five years of his career where they like, no, that's too crazy. You need to dial that back. And I think he had reached a point here. They can't tell him shit. He could do anything he wants to do. Now, he can't do porn. You know, like, we, we're, we're talking about within reason. Everybody's going to come up with an extreme example, right? We're talking about within reason. But there are a lot of things that are within reason 
that, you know, it's not porn. It's not, you know, people being eviscerated and gore, like the Walking Dead gore and shit. You know, we're not talking about that. But just crazy shit. The slime monster and, you know, the torso and the, the, the legs running around and talking through its ass and, you know, this kind of stuff. They're just nuts, man. Within the framework of what's, you know, not beyond the pale, but still so crazy that no editor would have let him do this 10 years prior. I really believe this now. And maybe edit, editorial things is, is different over there in Japan. Or maybe he's too humble. He would always accept uh, editing advice, right? Like maybe an editor is still allowed to edit him this far in his career. I don't know, really know how it works over there. But if he, if he was in America, this would be true. <laughs> you, you reach a point they can't edit you. You can do whatever you want. And so I'm wondering, is it that he can't be edited anymore? Or was this always the plan? Like he was always going to, you know, slowly progress and get more and more crazy as he went further into the story. I don't know, but it's interesting to watch.